Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the episode. I hope you enjoy it. Another uh, episode about Luperon in the Dominican Republic. I'm so happy to be here, and I hope you'll enjoy this video. So we'll take a look at me uh, and my efforts on the boat, filling the water tanks, which is just a housekeeping chore. And I did a repair on a bilge pump, then took an outing to a place called La Isabella, which we'll, I'll share with you. And then uh, Tropical Storm Isaiah's passed by to pay some visit for a few days and we had some rain. And now, uh, moving on to another adventure here in the Dominican Republic. But first, let's enjoy the video and uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks. Alright, so wrestling match phase one is over. Got the mattress upturned. <laughs> Okay, so not really a hell of a lot to this. <clears throat> Try your best to pour water down the hole. And I do have a towel standing by to sop up any spillage. And I do it this way even though I hate touching the mattress, which is gross. And I'll be thrown in the trash, I think. But I don't have a proper funnel. You know? And of course you can make funnels pretty easily if you have any old bottle, like an old bottle of Coke, you know, and uh, instead of crushing them up like I tend to do, I could just... And that's how I do it. And we're done. Two bottles in. It's another 10 gallons or so. Alright, so what would I do differently? Make a damn funnel and do it from the deck. It's too easy when you do it this way to stand on the tank. The tank itself is not made to bear the weight of a human, even a small person. So the rightest thing to do would be fill it from the deck connection. I swear. So, but for now, got the water in the tank. And I'm actually drinking water out of the tank now, so I don't need to keep a separate bottle for drinking water. Although I could still go buy a third. I only bought two this morning. Maybe I'll buy a third next time I'm ashore. I don't know. They're only 50 pesos each, so... Safety always puts on his gloves. And we don't need a hat and sunglasses inside. The basic problem here seems to be that when I turn the bilge pump switch to on, nothing happens. And it looks to me like it's pretty full and the bilge pump ought to be running. The bilge pump is down here. Oh my god, so. Today's a good day to screw around with that to figure it out. The problem is that there's oil on top of it, so if I if I get it to pump down, the question is should I pump it down? So even though I haven't even troubleshot the bilge pump yet, step one, it's just clean as shit. This hasn't been cleaned for years. And it's just The one thing I learned from a gentleman named Esteban, who's a cool dude who lives in uh, Chicago, excellent sailing tactician, I should point out. Uh, he like to say, we are not savages, right? It doesn't need to look like fucking this, you know? I mean, look closely, that's just, that's just stuff. I need to get a screwdriver to pry out the scum and freaking cat fur from here. This is a bilge. I cleaned up all the scum on the outside shelf. It was just chocker block full of cat fur. And you can see in the bilge, it's kind of semi-normal. There is a the connection that allows the bilges to communicate with each other. I'm sure that if I pulled up this deck plate, which was really, really hard to do, and pulled up the engine cover, they're somehow connected to the engine bilge, which might be higher in elevation. 
So we don't know if the engine builds drains to here or not. It looks like it does. I'm assuming that the white hose is the main bilge pump discharge hose. I'm assuming that those are the wires for the float switch and the pump. I mean, I can see a double wire can device, which is probably a float switch down there. The mystery is, what the hell is this black thing? I wonder if anybody watching the channel has seen that before. And I know it's difficult to see with the sunlight, but that's, I've never seen one of those things before. I'll, I'll try to backtrace a wire a bit. Now that I look, I can see there's another hose under the white hose. Oh, good lord, what the hell is that? No idea. No idea. Let's go figure it out. Shitty. Shitty looking stuff. <laughs> yeah, so here's the deal. I mean, I'm staying on the boat for free. I don't mind doing stuff to earn my keep, you know, it was otherwise pay a thousand dollars a month to get an apartment. Yeah. I hate shit work. <laughs> and I seem to just be made to do it or something. My conscience requires that I clean a little bit in order to earn my keep. That's what I say. This is what a bilge looks like after Russ Harvey cleans it. Okay, so what you're looking at down there are keel bolts. Those are appear to be stainless steel bolts. Some boats use carbon steel. They are really not bolts per se, but studs. So the the rod portion goes all the way down into, I assume, a lead keel or whatever, but this is basically what attaches the keel to the boat. And if you're, and these should be inspected when you buy a boat. They appear to be in great shape here. The white thing is the bilge pump, and the little black square thing, which I'm not going to get any closer to, that I assume is a level switch to tell the bilge pump to turn on. Okay, so this is the bowl for the pump. This is what I assume is a float switch for the pump. Sheet, so no beach. So with the uh, cleanup done, electrically what I found was that the ground wire itself was disconnected and the, the terminal itself was just corroded to pieces. So I uh, rewired the pump to get the ground wire connected, made sure the hot wires worked, and then decided it's time for a good breakfast and a day away. And I picked a hell of a day to rent a car because the policia, it's a key. I don't know what's going on. I think we're expecting a visitor at the marina restaurant. It's considered one of the best, most poupon restaurants in the town. And the police have the whole place closed off. In fact, I, dinghy, I took the dinghy in here just in the nick of time. They're turning away other boaters coming back on their dinghies. Sir, Aquino, go. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. So my rule of the day, as it always is, just be polite, you know. Language barriers can be overcome with Google Translate as part of it, of course. But other part is just being nice and smiling, proper handshake or fist bump, you know. Where the hell am I going? <laughs> well, it has been about six months since I've driven a car. It's been over 30 years since I've had a horse in the middle of the road. And it's the first time I've ever driven a car in the Dominican Republic. And it's the first car I've driven a cast powered by propane. So these are all newbies to me.
there's the ocean out there. And road construction. Well, I didn't come all the way here just to sit on my ass and watch the ocean, did I? No, I came to this place in particular. This is La Isabella. You may or may not know that Christopher Columbus or Cristobal Colon made four voyages to what we call the New World back then. And he settled La Isabella on his second voyage. Second voyage. That's why I'm here. And these are the Admiral's quarters. Not the Tiki Hut, of course, but you, know, you can see where the stone walls have been restored. I think it's fascinating looking at the stones themselves. That's weird looking. Nice view. I could dig living like this for a while. Over there behind me are the Admiral's quarters. That's where Christopher Columbus lived for at least a time after he set up shop here. So I came here today because A, it's pretty close to uh, Luperon. Over there is cemetery, iglesias, you know, further over the residences and further back is a warehouse. I thought it pretty cool. Um, and you can say what you want to say about Columbus. People vilify him because of his treatment of the indigenous peoples. I mean, it, it is a fact to the best, I think, historians can determine that. Columbus thought the indigenous folks, the Taino Indians, were good for one thing and one thing only, and that's slavery, you know, or to be just women for his men. And I, we think that's a fact. Some people, <clears throat> like Italian Americans who push for the Columbus Day holidays and the naming of cities like Columbus in Ohio, Columbia in South Carolina, Columbia University in New York, the Ivy League school, all, you know, reference Columbus in their names. And again, you know, the dude was not perfect for sure, but he was an awesome navigator, you know, and he, with a friggin' astrolab, you know, he made it all the way across here, not once, but twice. And he came back to the exact same friggin' spot that he went before, further up the coast, further behind me that way. Again, so this direction is about west that way. You know, that's where Haiti is. And that's where La Navidad was first settled. So the dude was an incredible seaman, an incredible, you know, navigator to get here and back and just return as if he was going on a, to the grocery. So, whatever. History comes, history goes. People write what they want to write. I want to come here because I'm here. And I, and I, I'm coming back. When Skipjack is, um, I'm moving the camera now. Stick with me, babies. Okay, so right out behind me now, I don't know if you can even see the water. So behind me, right out here, that's the anchorage where Columbus anchored on his second voyage. And this is where he set up his uh, settlement. And mark my words, Skipjack is gonna anchor in that same damn harbor in another year or two, okay? I can get these trees out of my way. Yeah, All right, so. It's about 8 a.m. Obviously, somebody's been pumping their freaking bilges down. You can see the sheen in the water. It's everywhere, and it's been like this for the last 20 minutes. Maybe a closer up and better look. Yeah. So I'd recommend don't freaking swim in Bahia, Bahia de Gracia. It's a fact that the cruisers dump shit overboard, literally. I don't think a single person has gone to a haul out. I'm the only guy I think who uses shore based toilets, you know. But you can see the sheen on the water, I think. A 
I mean, I know for a fact that people who have dogs and cats empty the litter pans and just dump it over the side. Yeah. So I've been away from Scotland since December 5. And I would say I really don't hate the rain. If it was like this every single day, I would hate it. This is the first time it's really been a steady rain all day here in Luperon. First time. But I'm still standing here in my swimsuit and my t-shirt. Well, I'm just kneeling on the floor right now. Two straight days of rain. It's a lot like Scotland in that it rains a lot. Um, I mean, it's winter time here in uh, the Dominican Republic. And when it's winter time, that's generally the dry season. And it's very strange, for me at least, that it's late January and we are actually dealing with two days of rain from tropical storms. You know, this tropical storm Isaiah has just passed us. And I just find that weird as hell. I don't know what other phenomena is going on, if it's global warming or whatever the hell you want to say. But the point is, two days of rain, I have to learn, I do have to learn, how to live with being friggin' wet all the time. I mean, I came back with a bag of laundry and the, laund the dryer just cannot dry the clothes because the incoming air is so moist. We put it through two complete cycles on the dryer and it's still... Um, it's still a little bit damp, so I'm inside the boat now, which is 99% dry. I've got a couple leakers, and I've got to figure out a place to hang laundry. It's like, and of course, dealing with the dinghy, you know, in the rain and the dinghy floods because it's taking the water, the plug on the dinghy leaks. So, this is really it's an excellent schoolhouse for me. So, it's all good, all good. Hey, uh, so thank you for watching this episode, guys. I, I've enjoyed it, you know, and I've enjoyed uh, living uh, in Luperon still. And I'm learning a hell of a lot more. Uh, the lessons learned episode is going to be separate, so I look forward to your comments there. And I'm uh, looking forward to another month or two in the Dominican Republic before it's time to move on. So, so take care, everybody. This area is looking a lot better. This is not how it looked when I got here. It, it appears as though this government is pretty well functioning because they were able to get a bunch of private boat owners to paint all their boats and them lined up nice and neat and tidy like books on a shelf. Before uh, the, his, uh, the president's visit the president's visit I happened to be in my dinghy paddling out to the boat when the president came ashore so security was giving me orders on what to do and in the process I almost met the president and I definitely saw one person I recognized from going ashore with the president I didn't figure out until later that it was Vin Diesel that's the government dock I like to zoom in, but then it's so hard to be steady. This is Luperon. Just beyond those mountains is the ocean. And we're blowing hard with the wind right now. Just turn. Try to keep the camera pointed a relatively <clears throat> a relative bearing straight ahead dead ahead so you can see as I turn and twist and stuff I steer with my ass <coughs> excuse me I try to because on this engine it's got issues it's got the lower bearing missing so it's very very difficult to steer and so I steer by shifting my
that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, I think we'll be okay. Looks like we're gonna crash anyhow. So now, my engine stalled on me. I'm just coming alongside. I do it the old fashioned way. It's all about controlling the boat. You know, there's no, you can talk about what's right and what's wrong and all that shit, but the bottom line is, control your damn boat. So I'm gonna do the camera jerk around here. Pause, 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 pause. Step one, to get my freaking bag to the boat. Because I'm leaving soon, I put the lifelines up. Which does make it hard to get in the boat. We're not going to tie you up on the side of the boat. We're going to tie up at the stern, so I'm taking the camera out with me. Oops, pardon me. So you guys want to know how just how smart I am? I knew that the weather was going to be very windy today, and so it's going to pick up. Okay. Okay. Hard part's done. Got my hands free. And nobody died again. Okay, now the boat's secured, officially. I always pull in and get a line on the deck. This is the match for the effort damage. I should say. I report my return aboard. Okay, I, re I report my return aboard.